Thank you, Tilman Luder. Uh, I now give the floor to Stephen, Stephen Mayor of uh, the European Securities and Market Authority. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, William. And let me first check whether you can hear me well, because I had some trouble with my audio. Can you hear me well, uh, William? I can hear you well. I just hear my own voice uh, echoing, but that does bother me. Okay, maybe you should then also put on mute if that might be uh, the advice uh, from, from my side. So I, I was concerned about my audio, but very good to hear that it's, uh, that it's working. Uh, and let me thank first uh, the co-panelists, uh, Isabel, uh, Tanate and, and Thurman to uh, being together uh, on this panel. I, I am afraid that there will be a lot of similarities and, and very some kind of very aligned message uh, coming from the uh, panelists. Uh, let me also thank the uh, ECB for organizing the event, uh, and finally thank uh, Tanat, but also his uh, uh, two uh, predecessors, uh, Coach Timmermans and uh, Steven van, van Rijswijk, uh, for, um, for chairing the working group. I think the progress has been uh, very good, uh, and their chairmanship has been uh, very important. Uh, it is really a, a pleasure for me to participate uh, in this year's roundtable on the euro risk free rates. And the roundtables uh, organized by the ECB have become an uh, annual appointment to discuss uh, the state of play of the interest rate reform in the euro area. They bring together stakeholders from both the uh, public and the private sectors, and it's important indeed uh, that they have a dialogue on this important topic. Uh, I fully support the aim uh, of the roundtable which is the sharing of the wealth of knowledge and that the working group on the euro, on the euro risk-free rate has built over the last three years uh, with the broad audience also present here uh, today. Um, before listening to the presentation uh, on the two consultation papers uh, which will come after this session, uh, I would like to speak about ESMA's view on the topics which are today uh, on the agenda. One year from now, uh, ESMA will substitute the Belgian FSMA, the Bel Belgian Securities Regulator, as a supervisor of Euribor uh, and uh, also of the administrator, uh, the European Money Market Institute. We at ESMA uh, are preparing ourselves for this new supervisory task, and we are committed to managing this new responsibility in a smooth and an effective way. As part of this preparation, we are cooperating with the FSMA to ensure continuity in the supervision uh, of the RIBOR. The FSMA has already authorized the European market, Money Market Institute as an administrator of the RIBOR under the benchmark regulation. EU supervised entities can therefore continue using the RIBOR for the foreseeable future. The European Market Money is Money Market Institute, uh, Market Money Institute developed and implemented the so-called hybrid methodology used to calculate Euribor. At ESMA, we consider this hybrid methodology robust, resilient, and transparent, as well as compliant with the benchmarks regulation. Thanks to this hybrid methodology, Euribor was able to properly navigate the turbulent waters of 2020. During this challenging period, Euribor has been reacting smoothly to monetary decisions by the ECB, playing its role in the monetary transmission mechanism for the euro area. Also, between the first and second quarter of this year, the underlying market of Euribor experienced a temporary liquidity reduction, but the Hibbert methodology was able to cope with these adverse circumstances. And starting in May 2020, the liquidity of the market underlying Euribor improved again, moving back to the level experienced before the COVID-19 crisis. As you are aware, there is no Euribor discontinuation in sight. Still, I would like to share with you an important message in relation to Euribor, and it's been also a message that was already shared with the previous uh, panel participants. Market participants must include the fallback provisions in the Euribor contracts. Fallback provisions are recognized as the most effective way to increase contractual robustness, and they are increasingly becoming an industry standard across different jurisdictions. Besides, 
Article 28 of the Benchmark Regulation requires supervised entities to include fallback provisions in their contracts referencing benchmarks, such as your eyeball. So there is a regulatory requirement that must be fulfilled. We know that your eyeball is widely used not only in derivatives, but also in mortgages and other types of loans. This means that millions of European households have direct exposure to your eyeball. ESMA's mission is to enhance investor protection and promote stable and orderly financial markets. As Euribor plays such a central role in EU financial markets, any issue related to the continuity of Euribor can become a risk to investor protection, market stability, or orderly financial markets. For this reason, we do not think that financial firms can afford to take any risk of contract frustration vis-à-vis Euribor contracts. The implementation of fallback provisions in all Euribor contracts, including legacy contracts, is therefore a regulatory and supervisory priority for ESMA. In the course of 2021, ESMA will work together with the National Competent Authority to monitor the implementation of the final recommendations on Euribor fallback provisions by the Working Group on Euro Risk Free Rates. ESMA and National Competent Authorities will use all the tools at their disposal to ensure that supervised entities across the EU adopt on a timely basis viable Euribor fallback provisions which are compliant with the benchmarks regulation. As said, after my speech, we will hear about the Euribor fallback provisions proposed in the two consultation papers by the working group. One of the two consultation papers focuses on the Euribor fallback rates, which will be based on Esther. As we will also hear later today, for some asset classes, such as mortgages or other types of loans, the consultation paper proposes to base the Euribor fallback rate on a forward-looking term structure. And this brings me to the second topic I would like to discuss today. A liquid asset derivatives market providing reliable and transparent price information is a, is a prerequisite for producing a forward-looking term structure. However, the current liquidity of the asset derivatives market remains modest. Since October 2019, Aeonia has been calculated at Esther plus 8.5 basis points. So Aeonia derivatives market and Esther derivatives market are now equivalent from a risk point of view. But this is not sufficient. Many traders are still using Aeonia in new contracts out of habit or inertia, despite the fact that Aeonia will be discontinued in January 2022. Therefore, my second key message today is a call on all market participants to take every necessary action to ensure the full and timely implementation and transition from Aeonia to Esther. Financial firms should now actively, actively use Esther instead of Aeonia in all their new contracts, as well as in their internal systems and calculations. An increased use of Esther in derivatives contracts will have a twofold beneficial effect. First, it will ensure a smooth discontinuation of Ionia in one year time. Secondly, it will allow the calculation of a solid Euribor fallback rate based on the Esther forward-looking term structure. In the UK, the use of the local risk-free rate, Sonia, is more widespread compared with the use of Esther in the euro area. The Sonia derivatives market is already well established, and since the second half of 2019, the average daily volume of new Sonia swaps traded has exceeded, has exceeded that average daily volume of and the pounds, the Libra, Libra swaps in pounds. Thanks to this existing liquidity in the Sonia derivatives market, some British administrators have been publishing a Sonia forward looking term structure since June this year. It is fundamental that in the very next month, benchmark administrators in the EU will be able to regularly publish an Esther forward-looking term structure so that, that it can be used as a Euribor fallback rate. Market participants should therefore no longer wait and fully rely on Esther instead of Ionia. The end of Ionia is approaching fast and Esther must be adopted as the sole risk-free rate for the euro area. Let me now conclude with a short remark. 
In February 2018, almost three years ago, I gave a speech at the first meeting of the working group. At the time, the Uribor hybrid methodology was not defined. ENI was not authorized under the benchmark regulation and the production of ESCO was not yet considered by the ECB. The interest rate landscape in the euro area has changed dramatically since the establishment of the working group on the, on the euro risk-free rate. It is important to recognize that the working group was at the very center of this progression. Back in 2018, the definition of precise and viable Euribor fallback provisions almost felt like a mission impossible because too many pieces of the puzzle were still missing. Today, we know that EU supervised entities will soon be able to implement accurate fallback language for all their Euribor products thanks to the finalization of the working group recommendations. The implementation of the Euribor fallback provisions is not the end of the story though. Euribor will remain in the spotlight. The liquidity of the market that Euribor seeks to measure, the unsecured Euro money market remains a source of concern. In addition, the representativeness of the Euribor panel of banks is also an issue that ESMA will monitor very closely. As future supervisor of Euribor, we're fully aware that we have a great responsibility ahead of us. ESMA is ready to continue its work with the ECB, the European Commission, and with all stakeholders of the private sector to ensure that the EU financial system can rely upon sound and resilient interest rate benchmarks. Thank you very much for your attention.